to bless you and welcome to another video of mine. Today we will be focusing on a very detrimental topic, brokenness, because we can't escape brokenness. Brokenness is in this world. So if you are interested in this topic, please stay tuned. To start off, we want to get to know what brokenness is. Brokenness is the fundamental disorder that exists in creation that will ultimately affect a person's relationship and behavior. So if you've ever been broken or know of someone that's been broken, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Their relationships crumble. Their behavior is erratic. Their behavior turns into disastrous um, destruction, really. And some of us experience brokenness inwardly inside of us, which the Apostle Paul explains that there is this pull between what is good and what is bad. And Romans chapter 7, verse 14 and 19 explains it very nicely for us. And so we're going to dive into that chapter first. And um, then we'll move on. 18 and 19 say, So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Verse 19 says, I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyways. Wow. So our sinful nature causes us to do things that we don't want to do. And why this ties into brokenness is because when we're broken, we tend to partake in sinful behavior to supplement the brokenness in our life because we're not whole. We are not happy in life. We're broken. We're broken into pieces. And with that brokenness comes sinful behavior. So we know what is good, yet we choose the opposite. And that is very common that is very common a lot of us know that we shouldn't eat that but we eat it anyways we know that we shouldn't be in that relationship we're, but we're still in that relationship we know that we shouldn't be getting hit in our relationship but we're still getting hit in the relationship we know we shouldn't drink because when we drink we become angry we know what is good we we know what is good and outwardly, the disorder of brokenness is expressed as scandals of greed, sexual abuse, anger, and erratic behavior. So where does brokenness come from? Well, to be honest, brokenness comes from the devil. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, the devil. Who is the devil? Where did he come from? I didn't know there was a devil. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a devil and he's out to kill, steal, and destroy you. Yes, you. He, he came to destroy humans. And we must be aware of that. And we must know where brokenness comes from because a lot of us, a lot of us blame God for the brokenness in our life when God had nothing to do with it. But God will use that brokenness for his glory. He'll use it. He'll use it 
and he'll show you how he can make you whole. And so I have some great scriptures to show you in um, the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. This verse truly tells you how wonderful God is that he is willing to mend our broken, our brokenness. And no one escapes brokenness. It could be in your home. It could be in this world. It can be in your relationships. Verse 10, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Wow. Wow. Now that is amazing. That tells you right there how the Lord loves us and is willing to use his right and mighty hand to hold us up and allow us to be victorious as we should be. And we can't let brokenness bring us down. Now, the devil is the source of all disorder and God created all that is good. God created all that is good. And let me show you. So since the beginning, even in Genesis chapter one, verse 27 and 31, it will show you that from the very beginning, things have been good and God has been doing good in this world. So verse 27 says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So verse 31 says, then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. So even us, he looked at us. And he said, and he saw it was very good. He saw, then he said it was very good. So he created all good things. All good things come from God. All good things come from God. So for example, the coronavirus, a lot of people blame God or a lot of people think that God is behind this coronavirus. I can tell you who's responsible for the coronavirus, but hey, you may not believe me, but I'm going to tell you anyways, the devil is behind and orchestrated this deadly virus. <clears throat> and it did not come from God. I believe God will use it to draw you closer to him and to show us all that we need him more than ever. Systems have failed us. Our financial systems, our businesses, everything was shut down. We couldn't do anything. All we could do is sit at home, read a book, watch TV, catch up on sleep, work out, get things done around the house, and maybe you got closer to God in that time. Maybe God used this so that you him. Now, God allows us to have free will. So God is not gonna control us. So he wants us to trust in him and for us to get closer to him, but it's all up to us, our own will. If we wanna get closer, then we will seek the Lord. So there are consequences of brokenness. And I'll name a few, adultery, anger, fear, bearing grudges, child abuse, addictions, envy, failure to forgive, fornication before marriage, the lack in trusting in the Lord, and selfishness. Now, that is several of them, but I know there's many more out there that um, are a consequence a brokenness and none of them were good none of them were positive 
So we know that brokenness is not a good thing. We've already identified that. That brokenness, when we hear that a person is broken, we don't identify it with good words or good indications. So brokenness will prepare you for future service. So brokenness will allow you to have a testimony, to, to talk to people and to relate to people. God will not allow brokenness to crush you. You may feel like brokenness is going to crush you in that moment, but let me tell you, brokenness has an expiration date. Yes, it has an expiration date. And anyone that has been through brokenness knows this very well. God uses brokenness to deepen our understanding in three ways. And these are the three ways. Number one, you will gain a new perspective of his mercy and his provision. Number two, you will have a more complete comprehension of yourself. Three, your compassion and understanding of others suffering will develop. So you may be a compassionate person and you, you may relate to individuals, but if you've been through brokenness, if you can relate to someone's situation, you just show this unconditional love and compassion for their circumstance. And that's what brokenness will do for you. It will never desert you. God will never leave you. God will never leave you. Psalms chapter 147 verse three says, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. God will never desert you. He will mend your broken heart and he will bandage up your wounds. God is here to help. God is not here to counsel you or to condemn you to hell. He's not here to judge you. No, he's here to love you. He's here to heal you. He's here to make you whole. Now it's up to you to come to him. But God is patient through the process of our brokenness. And that is, I mean, that just hit my heart when I heard that. God is patient through the process of brokenness. I mean, God has a eternal patience for us because we, we go back in sin, we go back in being righteous and we go back in sin. We um, do sinful things and then we don't. We're back and forth, we're back and forth. And God just has this patient through all this, all this madness. He has this patient. I mean, I want God's patience. I mean, that is just so wonderful. And God's goal for brokenness is spiritual victory. He wants us to be in tune with our spirituality. He wants us to be in tune with our Holy Spirit. He wants the Holy Spirit to speak through us. And, and he wants, he wants to use us for his glory. And I just ask you to trust in the Lord today. So I want to show you another um, scripture, another scripture, and it is in Psalms 46 verse one. So verse uh, one says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Wow. So God is our refuge and our strength and he's always ready in times of trouble so i just ask you to trust in the lord trust in the lord with your brokenness trust that he will help you he will strengthen you he will help you bandage your wounds he will help you bandage what you are broken from he will help you he will help you i just pray that the lord will help any of you that are broken it doesn't matter what you're broken about, that the Lord will continue to work on you and heal you through your process and that you will be patient with the Lord as well because the Lord is patient with you. Now, if you enjoyed this teaching on brokenness, go ahead and check out part two. Yes, there will be a part two. And I'm so thankful for you tuning in. God bless you again and again. I love you. God loves you. And just stay blessed, okay? Stay blessed. Bye.